And Flinders University, although it appears it's not putting any money in, it is backing it. It's welcoming this project and saying, oh, yeah, you can put a pilot project up here at Flinders so that it would run from the newly developed Bedford um, campus up to Flinders University where it would link up with the extended Tonsley line, which was announced last week. Rod Hook is the director of Rod Hook and Associates, former boss of the Department of Transport. He joins us now. Good morning, Rod Hook. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Matt. Rod Hook, what's the difference between this Skyway rail system and a convention, conventional elevated train? A conventional elevated train is uh, probably best described by looking at, um, uh, in a light rail sense, we put a tram line over South Road uh, a few years ago and that's a fairly uh, substantial structure to run up over South Road. We had a station at the top. So that gives an idea of what it would look like to put a, a train or a tram line in the sky and I might say in Melbourne, they're doing their version of Skyway, so there's no patent on the name here, but that's basically putting train lines in the sky. And by the time you do that, the structure's a bit more like you see in the superway, maybe not quite as wide, but you put a lot of concrete there and you uh, lift it and run it over the top of the, of the roads. In this instance, I see it as far more streamlined. Uh, and I can talk a bit more about that if you like, but uh, that's what we're on about here. What's the difference between um, a Skyway from these drawings we've seen and, and a monorail? Well, a monorail is a, a fairly substantial single beam and the rolling stock straddles that beam yeah. as it uh, heads around um, uh, the, uh, the particular track. Now, there was a monorail in Sydney uh, that well, they they've pulled since it, pulled taken out. They're much, they're, much de, they're much derided, as you know, if you're a fan of The Simpsons, Rod. <laughs> yeah. Look, um, I think the one in Sydney was a bit more of a theme park style. It didn't go very uh, very quick. It wasn't a real public transport uh, piece of infrastructure. In this instance, Skyway, we have two tracks. We have four wheels. Uh, the track is designed to be quite sleek, quite streamlined. It works on the rolling stock um, with four wheels, each wheel having a motor, each wheel having a uh, battery uh, that enables uh, or that is rechargeable, and it, it operates uh, around the, uh, the track, but basically on uh, four wheels, two tracks, rather than one vehicle straddling one beam. Okay, so, so is the innovation in this the rechargeable battery, because you don't need overhead cables? Uh, that's right, but of course uh, this runs or is suspended from uh, overhead um, beams. But um, when we built the tram line through the city in 2007, one of the questions I asked then, uh, and you would recall it wasn't the most popular project around at the time until it was finished, one of the questions I asked then was battery technology uh, and why do we need to continue poles and wires through the rest of the city? Why can't we have batteries that uh, will uh, allow the trams to go through the city part at least before you um, reconnect with poles and wires? The answer I got then was that uh, the technology is such that we could have a choice of putting batteries in the trams or people. The batteries would be so bulky that you wouldn't be able to fit people in. So you would see in 2007 we installed the poles and wires through King William Street North Terrace. Now, technology is developed to the stage and it's one of the very impressive components that has been developed for Skyway for this project and I'm sure there are other um, developments around the world, uh, battery technology has developed at the stage where you can have uh, in about a 350 uh, mil diameter wheel, you can have a battery that recharges in 20 seconds at a stop and will go for another 20 k's. Okay. Now, Rod, what is your plan? Your, it sounds like your plan initially is to build effectively a demonstration run of this. Is that uh, correct? I've talked to a few people about the possibility. I've had comments about um, people think we're on a winner. People are impressed. Uh, or people, people think are you're interested nuts. in, in is, looking at it. Look, I, I, I <laughs> haven't had that comment. There may be a few of your, your listeners in that category. I'm, I'm not sure. But basically... Uh, the, the comment I've got is that 
I don't think people are going to take a risk to build the first one. It's a bit like the retractable lights at the, at the Oval. It's great we're first out there, but um, uh, people want to see something operating. So they're building demonstration projects or prototype projects over in uh, Eastern Europe. Um, but us getting a 500-metre um, stretch of track and rolling stock operating down and up the hill at Flinders Uni is an opportunity for me to take people and show you this is what it looks like. Now, if you want to look at it in more detail, it's going to get on the plane and go to Belarus. OK. Now, if you say you can get 500, mil, 500 metres of track, and that would be from the Bedford Park campus up to between Flinders Uni and the medical centre... Four. Well, it actually goes goes the other way, Dave. It's oh. from the Bedford Park campus down the hill to the lower level car park for Flinders Uni, but also the point where the extended Tonsley train line would have its terminus. Okay, okay. so it won't be it it won't be clashing with the extended Tonsley train line. It, the idea is it will meet the end of that. Is that correct? That's correct. So you'd be able to end, get off. End. Technically, you'd be able to get off the extended Tonsley train line, the last station. Yes. Right? And uh, go and further further up the hill to the main university area. Yes, you will be able to. Right. Okay. So you'd be able to hop on this? Yes, or, you, or if you drive your car to the lower level car park, uh, you can uh, get on this uh, to head up to the university from there. All right. Now, you say you can do that for $13 million? Uh, that's what we're working on. That's what we're budgeting. Uh, and you, now that's, and you, don't that's want any, good... you don't want any money from Flinders Uni? Uh, no, I've, um, we've talked to Flinders Uni about getting access to the land. They've agreed to that. I haven't asked them for money. I haven't asked the government for money. We've got um, international investors who we will be um, working on bringing to the party uh, and uh, we'll be heading off to Belarus in a couple of weeks' time to try and follow that up. OK, so this isn't going to cost the taxpayer a cent? Uh, uh, no, that's that's the intention. Of course, if there is a decision further down the track, and look, one one aspect of this is moving freight, moving product, say from mine site to port or processing plant. Um, when that's built, I would expect the um, uh, say the the company, the private sector company, uh, if they're interested in this, mm. they'll pay for it. If you do public transport, there is usually with public transport a taxpayer subsidy, but that's further down the track and that's only if someone decides this is the way to go relative to other forms of uh, propulsion. You're on 891 Breakfast. And you're listening to Rod Hook talking about an idea in the sky. A, uh, it's called a Skyway. Uh, and um, he's planning to build it. Uh, Director of Rod Hook and Associates, former boss of the Department of Transport. Rod, are you really going to build this? Like, have you got uh, the money? Is it, is it going to happen? Or is this going to be another one of those in, in a year's time? We'll go, I remember that, those concept drawings. They were nice. <laughs> That's right. I'm on a, chick a bit of a chicken and egg here. We've got funding to get the design progressed. Um, we need to get international investors then to commit to the cost of construction. I can't get them to show interest in investing in the construction until we start talking about it and publicising it. Right. So if I sit here quiet, I don't get any interest from overseas. Going over there and showing them that we in Australia are out there, we're talking about it. And I think it's fair to say that investors on a world scale, and this is a global company, uh, they've got some interest in what's happening in Australia. Now, would the students, you say it could carry one million passengers, and they would be students, by and yes. large, a year, would they pay anything to use this thing? That's not our intention. Um, I, um, I ex it's a bit like a toll road, isn't it? My expectation, if we say to the students, here it is, uh, 10 metre rise, 500 metres up the hill, there's a charge. Uh, they may lose interest pretty quick. I yeah. want to demonstrate that it works okay, rather so, than yeah. uh, make money out of it. Right. Is anybody else doing this? Because why do you have to go to Belarus to, to see more of this kind of technology? But why aren't they actually? Why don't they have their own pilot program there and run it up the, the hill at Belarus? Uh, look, they are building a prototype project there, um, and um, this is technology. Sooner or later, uh, Dave, I think Australia has to invest in new technology rail. That's what this is. Um, it's been developed um, by people over there. It's not um, not my technology. We've got an agreement. To, we've uh, launched an Australian company. Uh, we've got the rights to introduce this into Australia. They're building a uh, prototype project there, and we can go and look at that. 
but again, um, short of anyone in Australia um, deciding that they'll go and look at what's being built over there, we just thought, and our discussions with them, are getting a short section of track here. Uh, if we can get the investor funding to build it, that gives them something to hang that hat, okay. their hat on too because we're doing something in Australia. Well, are Flinders Uni going to kick in any cash? Uh, no, we've uh, we've just talked to Flinders about using their land. I do some lecturing down there, and okay. it's a okay. development of their engineering program. I think it's good for the uni. I so, don't know. Great so, fun. Look, if if you can get the thing up and running, and the um, the federal government yesterday, if it's a, a shortened government, they're saying they're prepared, prepared to put half a billion dollars into trams, and um, the total project. That the big plan is three billion dollars worth. So clearly, there's a lot of money to be made out of uh, train, trams, and light rail. So you're prepared to. You, what you're hoping is that somebody's prepared to invest thirteen million in this, with a view to getting a much bigger slice of a much bigger pie. That's the uh, that's the way it works, Dave. Yeah. But look, I think we're talking new technology. We're talking sustainability because we don't. Um, put corridors across the ground, we don't intrude on um, traffic on roads and we uh, the key is we've got to be able to demonstrate we can do it more cost effective mm. uh, and come in cheaper than a traditional tram or train line. Ron Hook, thank you. Thanks guys. Mm. That's that's uh, the Skyway. Um, uh, more of a U Flinders Uni idea. No. <laughs> uh, Rod Hook, Director of Rod Hook and Associates, former boss of the Department of Transport Planning and Infrastructure back down on planet Earth on the road. Thanks to the caller who's let us know there's an accident um, on the corner of Henley Beach Road and May Terrace. It's only a few minutes old.